In this problem, we will do an example using something called the annual worth method of analysis. At this point, I'd encourage you to pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to get into the solution, restart the video. So as we see in this problem, it's really about one of these engineering economics type decisions. The company has to decide which device, we call device A or device B, do we purchase? Uh, and how do we make that choice using engineering economic analysis? So um, let's just get right into some of the details. Remember, like in, in um, other problems we've done, I will abbreviate the first cost as FC. And the first cost associated with device A, we read from the problem, is $100,000. And in this problem, I'm going to make sure that I indicate costs as negatives. Similarly, the first cost for device B we're given as $250,000. We also learn that these devices both promise to create some savings for the company. So I'm just going to write here savings and savings, we have to think of those as positive cash flows. So our, our savings will be different from costs, they will be positive. So device A uh, promises to save us $60,000 and I'll write here annually. Device B has a slightly more complicated pattern of savings. So device B promises to save us in the first year, promises to save us $200,000. And that's in year one. Then in this year two, if we read carefully the problem, we see that it will only save us 180,000 in year two. In year three, it saves us 160. And the amount of money that device B saves us every year declines by $20,000 all the way up to year seven, where we're down to $80,000. So um, this device B is really a seven-year time horizon for the purchase and savings of this uh, device. Device A, we're actually told that this will, this will last for 10 years. So device A is a 10-year investment, uh, lesser amount of money, but it lasts a little bit longer. If you recall from present worth analysis, if we have two projects with different time horizons, we need to do some manipulation to fairly compare those projects using present worth. So I'd need to use something like the least common multiple of years for seven and 10 years. That could get a little bit messy because that would be a 70 year analysis. It becomes a little bit ridiculous. One of the great advantages of the topic of this particular video, annual worth analysis, is that we can compare projects of different time horizons simply using an equivalent annual cost or an equivalent annual worth as a different way of approaching problems uh, and it's a good way to approach problems that have uh, different time horizons. So in this problem I'd like to, I'd like to um, visualize these problems with cash flow diagrams. The first one, device A, is relatively simple so we have the initial hundred thousand dollars, I'll just call it hundred K. And then over the 10 years, over the 10 years, we have these savings of $60,000. And that's our annuity, 60K. For device B, it's a little bit more complicated. So for device B, we have 
a $250,000 cost at time t equal to zero. We have a seven-year planning horizon, and we have savings that, that do this. They start out saving 200, decreases every year by $20,000 down to 80 at the end of year seven. Okay, so this cash flow diagram represents an investment in device B. This one represents the investment in device A. So let's try and do uh, an annual worth calculation for the value of each of these equipment purchases. So if we look at the annual worth of device A, it's a little messy. The annual worth of device A, we have an investment of $100,000. That occurs at time t equal to zero, so that's really a P. That occurs at time t equal to zero, which is the present. And if I need to convert this $100,000 to an equivalent yearly cost over 10 years, I can do that using the A given P compound interest factor. And if I do A given P, um, I should also mention this problem, uh, we're told to use the minimum attractive rate of return for the company of 10%. In previous problems, we just referred to this as the interest rate. In this problem, we're going to use specifically something called the minimum attractive rate of return, or sometimes people call it the minimum acceptable rate of return. Either way, it's still an A, so it's the MAR is also uh, often uh, given the name that we give to this 10% interest rate. That's the interest rate um, below which companies will not invest in a project. So this is the minimum acceptable rate. We'll treat it as our I in our time value of money calculations. So up here we'll say the A given P for 10% for 10 years converts our $10,000 present worth into an equivalent annual worth. And remember it's a negative number because it's a cost. We also have a benefit from device A of $60,000. And that's a positive number because that's revenue. And if I, if I calculate the equivalent yearly cost of this initial $100,000 investment, and then I add that equivalent yearly cost, I add the $60,000, I end up with sort of the net annual benefit of the project, which we call the annual worth. So in this particular problem, um, we have the negative $100,000 times the A given P 10% for N equal to 10 compound interest factor, which is 0 0.16275 plus 60,000. Or, to work out what this is, we have 43,000. 725. Now, if you do this calculation, you'll realize that this is in fact a positive number. And when we calculate a present worth or an annual worth using a company's minimum attractive rate of return, and the solution gives us a positive number, that means the project at least returns that target or that minimum uh, interest rate that we used in the problem. So, so this, is, this is a good thing. A positive number in our annual worth is a good thing. It means the net benefit of the project every year is equivalent to $43,000. If we do the annual worth for project B, we end up with $250,000 times the A given P factor for 10% but this time it's over seven years, so we're taking this 250, converting it to an equivalent annual amount that occurs over seven years. Um, and then we have the benefits. The benefits are the 200,000 that decreases. And I think, well, now what do I do? 
we did learn about an arithmetic gradient, but the arithmetic gradient went the other way. We had an increasing amount. So this doesn't really fit the pattern of a typical arithmetic gradient. So what do we do? Well, there is a little trick that we can do, and I think it's best described using the cash flow diagram. I can convert this declining gradient into an equivalent seven. I can I use an equivalent annuity. I can use the equivalent annuity of 200k minus a gradient. that is a negative value. So I can start with 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. And if you remember the pattern for an arithmetic gradient, we start at time t equal to one with a value of zero, and this is a g of negative 20. Okay, so now I can actually use some of those compound interest factors that refer to a g. This is an A, just a regular old A. If I take a $200,000 a year annuity and I subtract a gradient of negative 20, that is equivalent to this cash flow diagram. So that's a little bit of a uh, engineering economics uh, trick that we can use if we have a declining balance. So I'm going to just take this idea and convert it um, into our annual worth equation. So if I have, I've already taken care of the, the initial 250, now I've got this 200,000, and the 200,000 is already an equivalent yearly amount because it's an annuity, and I'm just going to write here as well. Now I just need this amount. So really, I've got a negative 20,000, and I can multiply by, these are 20, that's 20k, I can multiply by the a given g factor for 10% and 7 years. And this gives me the equivalent annual value that I would then subtract from the 200,000 in order to get the, the, um, the equivalent annual worth from this original uh, time value, or this original cash flow diagram. So if I calculate these numbers, I have 250,000 times the A given P factor, which is 0 0.20541 plus 200,000 minus my 20,000 times the A given G factor, which is 2.20541. 6216. And if you do the math, you end up with 96,215 dollars and 50 cents. So here we also notice that we end up with a positive annual worth. That's good. Right? So that should get a smiley face as well. And if we have a net positive amount, that means a positive annual worth. Obviously, the larger positive annual worth is better. So if I compare 96,000 for the annual worth of B and 43,000 for the annual worth of A, I always want to select B. And, and I always encourage students to write that conclusion, select project B. In fact, this is a device B, project B, but this becomes the solution that you should write. That's the decision you make based on the engineering economic analysis.